My name's Taps, this is 0102 Studio, and this is a review, not of these, oh, but of these big bastards, the Q Acoustics 3030Is. Ow. Let's get into this. So when I originally reviewed the 3020Is, uh, I remarked in that video that uh, I wish they made a larger bookshelf speaker. The 3050i, which is the floor stander in this range, featured a larger driver than the 3020i's. And I was like, why is there not a larger driver bookshelf speaker? Q Acoustics went and released this about a year later. Uh, it's basically everything I asked for. It has all the same features. It looks, looks exactly the same as the 3020i. And I'm really glad that Q Acoustics made these speakers. All right, so a bit of a spoiler or disclaimer for this review. Yes, I uh, originally did this review for Home Theater Secrets. Uh, yes, I do get compensated for those reviews. And yes, Q Acoustics did leave the speaker with me after the review, which I am forever grateful for. Very happy that this was essentially free. And I use this daily. From a looks perspective, there's absolutely nothing different other than being bigger. It's got beautiful rounded corners. It's got the exact same faceplate, just bigger. Uh, it's got a larger cabinet depth. It has point to point bracing, uh, which is really good internal bracing for it. On the back, oh, you have same beautiful base port, the same low profile binding posts. I wish more speakers had binding posts like this because it makes it easier to fit on shelf when the binding posts aren't sticking out like two inches. Love these ones. And they accept banana plugs as well. Um, on the front face, I just went over this, but yeah, oh, on the bottom. Ugh. On the bottom, you still have pre-installed rubber feet and you still have this uh, like screw hole so you can wall mount these. I wouldn't wall mount the 3020 eyes, and I'm definitely not going to wall mount these guys. Ugh. As with the 3020i, these are a two-way bass reflex speaker. Um, it's available in Arctic white, like this finish, carbon black, uh, graphite, gray, and walnut. The bass driver is a six and a half inch bass driver, and the tweeter is a 0.9 inch tweeter. Frequency response of this speaker is 46 hertz to 30 hertz impotence it can dip to six ohms minimum imp impedance is i say impotence it's impedance impedance is six ohms minimum impedance is four ohms it's not impotence sensitivity is 88 decibels the same as the 3020i's and this one weighs 13 and a half pounds it's, i don't know how you would wall mount that so it's a larger overall speaker dimension than the 3020i's how big it's actually double the cabinet volume of the 3020i so that's quite a bit more space and that space is required to push the air around and to accommodate the larger driver that's within this box oh let me just back this out because it's easier okay oh, oh. Like the 3020i's, the 3030s also have a rear firing base port, which most people will tell you that if you're gonna have a rear firing base port, you wanna pull them out from the wall a little bit so you don't get any sort of base boom, or you could also plug the base port to mitigate any of that. I never do any of that shit. I always leave the plug uh, open and sometimes I have them pushed up against the wall. I don't mind a bit of base boom, that's just me. But little foam bungs are supplied with the speaker, so you can plug them up or pull them out from the wall. You can do you. You can do you. I don't do any of that shit. I did receive the QB12 subwoofer along with these speakers uh, for this speaker review. And if you don't have space for a subwoofer and you just have space for large bookshelf speakers, I think you'd be fine without a sub for just everyday usage. But these only go down to about 46 hertz, so if you are a bass fiend like me, you're going to want to have a subwoofer connected regardless. I think you'd be hard pressed to find bad sounding entry level speakers from a speaker manufacturer that makes high end speakers in this day and age. If you're an audiophile that's looking for super revealing speakers that extract every detail from your music, yada yada yada, 
these aren't those speakers. If you want a big bookshelf speaker that doesn't cost you an arm and a leg, these are those speakers. They partner well with basically everything that I've ever paired with them. A mad entry level amp, my Cambridge Audio CXA60. I've used them with a Macintosh amplifier. I've used them with a uh, an Anthem AV receiver, a Marantz receiver, everything. Everything that I've had in house, I've put these speakers on. They sound amazing with everything. When the speaker was released, it was essentially everything that I wished the 3020i was. And since this was everything that that speaker wasn't, I just assumed that it was going to just like replace that speaker overall. And it didn't replace it for my everyday. And it's not really a fault of this speaker at all. It's really a fault of whoever the hell built this house. And again, that horrible building that's in my living room uh, where these speakers just don't fit in the building and the 3020 eyes do. So therefore those are my de facto everyday TV watching, movie watching, family room speakers. Where these speakers do reside is in our formal living room atop the large sideboard that's in that room. In our former living room, we have a decent sized sectional couch. And the reason I mention it is I never sit dead center on said couch when I'm listening to music. It just found it kind of weird. Like I always end up on either side of the couch because there's an arm there I can lean on it. And when I'm sitting in that room, I'm usually brainstorming design ideas or doing quick drawings or sketches. And I want to be as comfortable as possible. And these speakers are good in that you're not locked into like towing these speakers in and uh, getting a pinpoint accurate image, they have more open soundstage. So you can sit pretty much anywhere on your couch and get the exact same listening experience. All right, listen, I have nothing bad to say about these speakers. I love them. They look great. They sound great. And if you're a fan of Kuhustik's industrial design, then these are speakers you need to go look at. 